right, so I want to do a quick review of what we've been working on, and that is sketching our still life, which for us today is a collection of paper airplanes. So we were supposed to draw them about four times, and I told you guys to pay attention to the lines and the angles of intersection. And um, you want to make sure you're doing what your eye sees and not what your brain is kind of tricking you into doing. Because your brain wants to say, hey, we already know what a paper airplane looks like. And you got to be like, no brain, you need to check yourself. We don't know what a paper airplane looks like. We just know what you think it looks like. And then we kind of look and we can make out the different angles and how they work together. And that's going to ultimately give us a more realistic form or a more realistic three-dimensional kind of shape. Speaking of which, this angle is way too small. You can kind of think about 90 degree angles or right angles, acute, obtuse, and just decide what works best for what you're looking at. So now I've got my red airplane drawn and going to come in for that second one, and I'm looking at how it touches the red one. It's a little bit, the blue one I'm working on now is a little bit behind it, and I'm kind of looking at the angle that it's at, and also how far along on my airplane it comes down. So I'm going to say about here, about that angle, which means this one is probably kind of wrong, and that's okay. So if you weren't here yesterday, this is what we're working on to get finished with your drawings. Then we'll be moving on to paint, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay, now this has got one of those creases going down the middle. And this should be way down here. And go like that. So as I'm working and my eye is kind of catching more and more of these uh, details and I'm just checking my angles as I go along, you'll notice me sometimes erasing some of them because they're just not in the place I need them to be. And that's okay. As you look closer, you might notice more things. Okay, and let's see. This one should be about there. This airplane goes off the edge. Like, I should have the nose of the airplane right up here. But that's okay. It's not here, so I'm not going to draw it. Or I don't have room. Now I've got that black airplane in the background. And it runs into this red one about here. I'm going to connect those. It peeks out back here. And comes almost straight down. And then goes back. Okay, so I've got my sketch. You're going to do four. You're going to check with me, and I'm going to help you pick out your best one, okay? That's the one you're going to paint. Then we've got our trays of paint. Please notice that none of the colors are mixed up. You want to keep it that way, okay? Got a container of water, and I've got a brush. I just set out all new brushes. So... You need to make sure you take care of the paintbrush. This is acrylic paint. It will dry as a plastic. And then I can't reverse that. So if your paintbrush is put away and it's not cleaned out, it's going to dry rock solid, and we're not going to be able to paint with it, and I can't fix it, so we just won't have any paintbrushes, okay? So it's very serious that we have to make sure we clean them out. Also, when you're mixing colors... Don't mix them in this tray. Nobody wants to deal with your mixed up messy colors. I have plastic mixing trays back by the sink. You can use those, but when you're done, you have to scrub them out under the running water with your thumbs. Um, if you're not into that, you can use a piece of scrap paper, kind of fold it in half, and that can be your mixing tray or your surface to mix on. I like my paintbrush not too wet, so I'm gonna keep a paper towel nearby that I can kind of dry my brush off on. Now I'm going to jump right in with this red airplane. And kind of like when you're wearing a red shirt, but it, you know, creases and crinkles around your body, 
you can see the shadows, right? They're not the exact same color of red. But if I ask you, what color is your shirt? You're not going to tell me. It's red, but the shadows are a little darker. Saying it's red is a reference to the local color. That's the color of the object. But what we're going to try to paint in today is the highlights and shadows that kind of let it look like a three-dimensional object. Get the different surfaces of the airplane and the way the light hits them and how that changes the appearance of the local color. So really, right now, I'm just sort of filling it in. I wish I had a smaller brush. If you are brushing or painting and you feel like, I wish I had a larger or smaller brush, you're allowed to have one brush at a time, but you can clean out your brush and go trade it for a different brush anytime you want to, because sometimes you might want a bigger one, sometimes you might want a smaller one. Um, you can trade brushes as often as you need. Okay, so I've got this red one all painted in, but what I need to do is when I look at it, and if you look at your display also, you're gonna notice that the light hits it in some places and it doesn't hit it in other places. Highlights are typically warm because they're getting kind of bathed in the warm light, and shadows are cool because they're getting blocked from the warm, warm light. So when I'm trying to mix one of those things, I will tend to use a warm color like yellow to give the warmer uh, highlights and a cool color like blue or purple to give the shadows. Before you go into a different color, you always need to clean out your brush. I take my brush, I push it on the bottom a few times, I kind of check it, and then another check is to sort of go like this and make sure there's no paint there. I picked up the dirty brushes, or the supposedly clean brushes in the other class, and I tested them out of my arm. Does it look very clean to you? Nope, sure doesn't. If it was clean, I wouldn't have orange all over my arm. Okay, so back to this. You can blend your colors on your separate surface, but I really like to blend right on top of the paint. So I'm adding some yellow, and you want to clean your brush out in between colors. I'm not doing that as much because one, I'm awesome and I can do it without mixing the colors. But two, I don't want this video to take 900 hours. So I'm cutting a few corners. So you want to get in the habit of cleaning out your brush. And if you don't and you accidentally get one color in another color, like I drip some red in the yellow or something, you're going to use a paper towel to clean it out because the classes that come in after you, nobody wants to deal with your mess. You know what I mean? So we're going to tidy up our own brushes. So I've got now this surface that's kind of hitting the light. And so it's a little lighter. And I see that also on the tip where those two creases come together. There are two highlights and there are a shadow. Got a little too much paint on my brush. So I'm just going to kind of take that off on my mixing surface or my paper towel so I can blend this a little better. And what I also see is there's a little place where the light's hitting kind of here and back on this corner a little bit. So I tend to not really want to over blend. I kind of like seeing those brush strokes in there, which I think we talked about um, when we were looking at the videos of the demonstrations that other artists had done, but that's really gonna be kind of a personal style for you, a personal choice you're gonna make. Now, speaking of personal choices, as the artist, I'm starting to see these differences between the warm and the local color, the high, warm highlights and the local color of red, but I wanna punch them up a little bit more. So I'm gonna add even more. A lot of people tend to think, oh, I wanna make it where the light is, that means I need to use white. And that will give you kind of a weird pastel sort of Easter egg looking painting um, because the white just kind of dulls it down. You get much richer highlights if you use warm and cool colors. So that's not to say you can never use white or black, but they're not gonna give you the most accurate representation. And now just to prove myself wrong, I'm gonna use a little bit of white right here. So I really want that to show that highlight. And maybe just a little bit here. 
So really just a little touch of it here or there. I'm relying mostly on that warm yellow. Now the highlights are just kind of half of the game because they pick up the lighter spots, but I also need to come in with some shadows to kind of clue in the darker spots. So my shadow is the darkest right under the wing because the wing is casting a shadow. I forgot to clean my brush, so I'm sitting here putting warm color where I want the cool color to be. That's a disaster. I'm gonna check it, is it clean? Oh yeah, look at that, nice and clean. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple and I'm gonna start to come in and I'm still looking at my still life. You don't wanna think you're done looking at it. I'm looking and letting it kind of help me figure out where these shadows are gonna go. And I need a little more down here. And once I start to add the shadows in with the highlights, they're both pushing and pulling in the other directions and they start to really kind of let it show that it's got some shadows and some dimension. That was way too much purple, so I wiped some of it off. And now I'm gonna come back in and sort of blend it out. So hopefully we're able to see how this wing is casting this shadow underneath. Um, we've got the highlight up here and the highlight's kind of kicking off here a little bit. For me, one of the most challenging parts is that shadow where the two creases meet on that nose of the airplane. So that might be some place where I would think, ooh, I need a smaller brush because that's just a little detail, but it really adds to it. Um, but again, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'm just going to try it without it. That looks not too bad. But see, the, sh the light up against the shadow just really pushes that in another little direction. And back here, I see just a little bit of the shadow of that other half of the airplane kind of coming up. So I'm going to put that back there. It's just slightly darker. Okay, the camera I don't think captures this color as much as I would like, so I'm gonna lift this up for a second so you guys can see it. Is it easier to see here? Okay, so now, this one's good for now. Uh, the videos we watched of the other artists, they kind of jumped around to a lot of different places. If you don't like something on yours, you can just let it dry and paint right over it. So don't kind of get too hard on yourself, like, oh, that color is totally off. Let it dry and you can paint over it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to paint this turquoise one. Now, I didn't put any turquoise paint in our trays. So let me put this to the side for a second. I'm kind of scooping out some blue, putting that on my mixing paper. I need to clean out my brush. And test it out. Yep, we're good to go. So now I'm gonna grab some green. This is kind of a lighter turquoise, so I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white. And I'm gonna mix this together. Now the chances of me coming up with the exact color of that construction paper are slim. I've had a lot of practice color mixing and I've taken classes on color theory and it's just a lot, which is fine when you're at a college level, but for this project, I don't want you to be too tough on yourself if the color isn't exactly what you're seeing. Just get it as close as you can for the local color. And I'm painting in my turquoise. I'm gonna be very careful not to run into my red. If I did, if I had an accident like that, I'm just gonna let it dry. Now you might not wanna paint every part at one time. It might make you nervous to paint over your lines all at once. You can do it a little bit at a time. That's just fine too. It's gonna to be kind of whatever works best for you and your style. Okay, so now I've got my local color on there and I need to do the same thing. I need to come in with some highlights. And this is showing me highlights. Um, let's see, coming up at this angle and kicking over this way and coming back here and coming all the way down. So I'm gonna kind of now work on making these two surfaces 
have that warm look of light. And on the other side, okay. And again, highlights are only half of the game. So where these two sides of the airplane meet, there is also a shadow from that crease. So I'm gonna come in now with a darker color and very carefully, oh, I didn't go into a darker color. I went into the yellow, that's not darker. I'm gonna very carefully try to add in that shadow. Again, the instinct might be to try black, but black is a neutral color and you tend to get better results when you use a warm color or a cool color. Cool colors for shadows, warm colors for highlights. I've also got a lot of shadow under this wing because the wing automatically casts a shadow. Sort of like if you're sitting under a tree on a sunny day, the tree casts a shadow. That what, that's what makes that spot of shade that people like to sit in. So shadows are half the game, highlights are the other half of the game. Or maybe they make up 80%, 40, 40, we'll call it that. Okay, so this shadow stays pretty dark as it comes under this crease, but it starts to fade as it gets to the point. So I'm not gonna add it in everywhere as dark because it kind of fades out. And again, I'm wishing I had a smaller brush, but that's okay, we're gonna be fine. Now, I also have some sh uh, creases that need shadows, kind of here and here. I want to kind of blend those in just a little bit so they're not so harsh. And maybe still come in with just a little bit in the middle. This isn't really giving me the contrast I want, and so what I probably need to do is let it dry and then try to come in with that smaller shadow. That's A-OK -okay too, um, it's just fine. So this is where I'm at right now and this is where I'm gonna stop for my painting today. And you just wanna try and work with local color, cool shadows and warm highlights. And remember to look at what you're doing and let that be your guide. You don't want your brain to trick you into anything. You want to make sure you're looking at what you're working on. So again, when I'm done, I need to clean out my brush. I tend to just kind of thump on the bottom. Sometimes this is called the pharaoh of your brush. Sometimes paint gets on there. You might need to wipe it with a paper towel or your fingers. And then again, check it on your hand. If it's not clear water, then you didn't clean your brush and you need to do it again. Otherwise, the brushes will dry as a solid, they will be ruined, we will run out of brushes, and we won't be able to paint anymore. So let's not do that. All right, I'm excited to get started.